Josh and Campbell, and, and I'll be walking us through this conversation. We really appreciate you being a part of this. Uh, Lynn Hack, uh, Lynn Shippies University's Hockey Analytics Conference is the third year, um, and we appreciate it. And and obviously, we're European clubs. We're, we represent um, you know universities here, but also we have club members that are here, so analysts that work for clubs. We have students here. We have professors here. Um, and everyone kind of looks to the NHL to to see what's happening in the hockey world. And and so 15 minutes of questions from my end. Um, Campbell, you and I spoke a couple of days ago. So so if it's okay, I'll just jump right into it. Is that okay? Yeah, thanks for having yeah. us. Sure, thank you. Um, first off, um, can you explain your two roles? Uh, if I start with you, Campbell, and then and then Josh, you exchange your role. And then after that, tell us how the Bruins have built their uh, analytics department. Sure. Um, so hi everyone. I'm Campbell. I'm the director of hockey systems with the Boston Bruins. Um, and so what that means is I'm, uh, leading the backend development and engineering side of our analytics department. Um, our analytics department is a little unique in the NHL, I would say, in that we have a solid, uh, footprint, like over half of our analytics staff are actually on the engineering end. Um, and I would argue, you know, the result is we've built up a lot in terms of reusable tools for our department to use um, when it comes time to analyze any decision, whether we're talking about players, the draft, uh, trades, or, you know, coaching in-game type decisions. So a lot of my job um, is maintaining, developing, and building on top of our stack. We have a web application that drives a lot of our decision-making for our uh, coaching staff, our general managers, our scouting staff. Um, we also have a whole ETL management tool, which for us is called Airflow, but there's, you know, a lot of different variations out there. So a lot of, um, a lot of data, and, uh, data engineering and ETL development, and then managing all of our web infrastructure, our databases, our, you know, processes that spin up in order to, to, churn a lot of data and then write it to our database so that it's available for Josh in the morning. Uh, things like that, the very technical, but then also branching into, you know, when it comes time for our amateur draft meetings or our pro meetings and decision-making uh, steps like that, uh, uh, being in the room and being able to offer my two cents and also make sure that we have the best tools to help aid in each of those decisions. Um, yeah, Josh. Yeah. Uh, hi, Josh Bullkamphart. Uh, so I'm the associate director of hockey analytics, but mostly I work in data science and analysis. Uh, so within our department, Campbell alluded to, we have three, enge uh, three engineering side people. So that's Campbell and two others. Uh, one's a developer and one's more of an engineer. So they help him uh, build a lot of the really great tools we have. And then my, we have myself, and then we have our director of uh, hockey analytics, uh, Jeremy Rogalski, and we do most of the analysis and I tackle our data science. So, uh, you know, as Campbell said, every day we kind of get data processed and we have reports or players we want to look at, uh, reports we have to write or players we have to look at. And uh, so we'll be using our tools to figure out kind of uh, what insights we have to give to our decision makers. Uh, and so that's a lot of my work. And then all of the metrics and models that go into the website or um, you know, if we have simulation tools or if we have other logic that's getting built, uh, a lot of times that research falls on me and then I work with Campbell and their group to make sure that we uh, get all of that built in a sort of a repeatable, sustainable way. Now, now when, you, when you say that you build your own uh, so tools, uh, are you then talking uh, algorithms and, and processes that can be used in the future? You say you wanna reuse them again. Um, is that what you mean, or is it something else up and above that? Sure, I can jump on that, Josh. I think, yes, it definitely includes a lot of, yeah, what, what you would describe as algorithms or, um, you know, some of that is like Josh will build a model, right? And that model, there's there's a lot of different ways to tackle a problem. So, for instance, if we get a question from our coaching staff that's like, we want to know how we are at defending the rush, Right. We could go out and pull data one time and create a model that tries to predict, you know, rush offense or whatever, um, run all that through, write up a report and send it back to our coaching staff. Um, 
a fine model. It works one time. We like to, in every instance, ask the question, is there a way for us to build this to for it to be used multiple times again and again? And in that rush defense, uh, in that rush defense example, that's kind of like painfully obvious, but in others, it might be less so. So we like to build something where we can have a system that runs every morning and takes every game and, you know, channels into a new metric that helps us to explain our rush defense. And then when our coaches ask the next question, we've hopefully already got um, both through a combination of our, our engineering backend, our systems that are churning our raw data into our database every day and the algorithms we've written and committed into our code base, we've got something in a website that we can pull up in 30 seconds or less to answer their questions. The translation of information to players is something that we've discussed a lot here. And, and now the Bruins and all the NHL clubs have four, five, six, seven, maybe even up to 10 people in their organization here in Sweden. We have one per team at the most. And in Finland, uh, even less than that, uh, Switzerland, somewhere in between. Uh, how many guys, how many times do you guys have lunch with David, David Pasternak and discuss his situation or, or how do you deliver information to your players? Because that's why you're there is to help players become better better to win more games how does that process work that communication um yeah so for us communication we try to use uh, a fair amount of trickle down with the players through the coaches or other intermediaries um a lot of times it's a lot easier that way because the language is going to be most consistent so pasta is a good example uh, you know there are times during the year where he likes to commit more turnovers than any player in the league and when he gets into those sort of spells Maybe you tell a coach, hey, um, if you want to go talk to Pasta and, you know, ask him to maybe not do spinoramas of the blue line on power play, um, <laughs> you know, that's a that's a pretty easy one for us. So we can we have coaches that we work with and they trust us to give them insights that are useful. And it's a two way street. We'll ask them, do you know why? Is there something that's inherent to the process here? Um, you know, he's a high risk, hard reward player. That's OK. Um, but, you know, if it's undue risk. What can we do to mitigate some of that? So uh, it's a lot of times it's communication with the coaches that they're the best tool for that part. Um, and again, I think it's a little bit inception also, because as Campbell was talking about having all these tools, um, we make everything self-service enough that we don't really need to be handing them the insights. They can find a lot of insights. Um, our GM is sneaky good at it. He'll have the answer to a lot of questions before we even have to ask it. Um, so you 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 can really get a long way if you can kind of put things in a consumable way in front of your decision makers. So coaches, they get the reports they want um, before we even have to annotate them. And the same thing with our management. Now you say said a couple of times that you have reports. So you've written down data, you've taken out the points and they've learned or um, you help them understand that. So they don't need your communication on a daily basis or a weekly basis. Is that correct? Yeah, and um, that's a give or take too, because or give and take too, because the data that we put, you know, the first time you build some of these reports, it's much like the first time you're uh, doing homework and you don't really know what the answer is. You kind of put in what you think is the right things, and you talk to the coaches, and they say, "Well, I don't really care about this one step, but I really want to know about this other thing." Eventually, you hone in on the set of things that are interesting to them that are going to be actionable. And I think that's where years of iteration help you get there. And that's what we've got to now. So now they know the data points that are going to be impactful to them, that are useful for our strategy and our good metri metrics of whether or not we've been successful in what we want to do. And so that's that allows them to be self-service in the reports. Uh, are you two guys hockey guys? Have you played hockey? Yeah. <laughs> Campbell's a goalie. Uh, <laughs> And, uh, my question is, do you see that as advantage or a disadvantage? I would still think I, that there's a bit of, uh, go ahead, Campbell. Uh, no problem. Sorry. Um, I, I do think it's a, a bit of an advantage. I wouldn't think it's anything that would hold, it shouldn't hold you out if you're not. Um, it's a lot easier to understand hockey at the level that you need to, to be able to do this job than it is to develop the technical skills that you need this to do that you need to have in order to do this job. Um, that having been said, I think there are a lot of advantages. I mean, the biggest one is that being passionate about both playing, understanding hockey, and also just, you know, the NHL and and the way it works and the people in it 
makes my job easier because it's exciting to me every day. And also, especially on the more coaching and report related stuff, uh, being able to speak a little bit of the language of understanding hockey terminology comes in handy because there's a lot of people on our staff who, um, by no fault of their own, they're not going to, you know, break down what they're asking for into step-by-step -step engineering level to do items. It's more like you got to understand what they're looking for based on your hockey intuition and then build something that they'll use. The uh, raw data from what I understand comes from sport logic. Do you, do you have other um, companies that are putting into things that you've built your structures around or are you using that data only from sport logic and then working from there? Go ahead, Campbell. Sure. Sport logics are, are definitely found like foundational biggest provider because in large part, because they've just got such great coverage. So many leagues where we can get like every game. Um, but yeah, we have a lot of other data sources that we work with as well. Um, cap friendly for cap information in the NHL, the league itself, um, not even accounting for the puck and player tracking data that, you know, is, is relatively new, but they've got a lot of sourced information on, you know, scheduling and whatever that just makes it very, uh, it is very helpful when trying to build a product that your full staff will be able to use. Um, we have a data provider that we've worked with for uh, amateur level scouting information that I think every team in the league uses um, for production data across the leagues. Um, yeah, we've got a good number of, of data providers all wrapped in there. Uh, Campbell, I promise you that I wouldn't put you on the spot. And I'm going to try to not put you on the spot. So if, sure. you, if you don't answer this question, <laughs> you can do it. But w w where do you guys do the best work? Is it in roster management, scouting, drafting, contract negotiations? Where do you guys feel like we're doing a great job here right now? This feels good. And I'm not saying that other places are worse, but um, where where do you guys do a great job? You can go first, Josh. Yeah, I mean. Uh... I would say our drafts are not very stressful because we don't have a lot of picks. So yeah, that helps. Um, you know, that's that's pretty useful for us. Uh, I think organizational tools, you know, talking about meetings, things related to meetings, I would say we have an exceptional set of tools for that. Um, and we've really tried to build a lot of sensible logic in terms of improving processes. Uh, and in, and kind of giving people guidelines in terms of like what are reasonable metrics for success. Um, you know, like a simple example that uh, I, there was an article about decision making in hockey and it was, well, everyone sits around its table and they just talk about stuff and eventually an answer comes out. Um, that's not a very effective process. So we have tried to add a lot more guide rails to that and, you know, allow for less bias. So allowing people to vote on things or be independent in the way that they create opinions, uh, as well as trying not to overweigh the loudest person in the room. So, you know, I think that's that's probably where we've made the greatest strides is just by being uh, fairly organized. It's not a very sexy answer, but I think it's an answer that's very impactful. And certainly long-term. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say something very similar. So um, I think it's it's not what I envision the job would be like, but it's honestly a, a much more rewarding task to be working on because at the end of the day your analytics department is only as good as it can convince your decision makers to make better decisions there's very little we do that directly impacts our bottom line you know our our ability to win hockey games it all has to flow through coaches through players through scouts through general manager so if we're not convincing them then we're doing nothing and if we're not building something that they can see, understand, and use on a regular basis, then we're not convincing them. We're not doing anything. Uh, my last question, guys. Um, you, you went into the playoffs. You end up playing the the Maple Leafs. Does your job and the more things you do, do does that increase drastically because you're all of a sudden in the playoffs and everything's on the line? Or do you just do the same thing that you've been doing under the process? Um, I yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Well, I would say there's a lot more like tracking down um, small questions, you know, coaching questions uh, in the playoffs. Uh, you know, there's lots of stuff where during the regular season, 
you're not playing the same team over and over again. So you don't have to hone in on these micro details. Um, and, and that is a fair amount of work, you know, so it's all hands on deck in that way. Um, but it's not crazy different because we've tried to build enough tools that we could solve things quickly. Every year, I feel like I go into the playoffs and I'm telling myself, we're telling ourselves that, oh, like if we've done our jobs, we don't have to do anything different because we've built all these tools. Like hopefully everything already exists that we would need to do this. And then every year, like Josh is saying, there's these little details that someone picks at and then it's like, okay, well, we should really build this into something we can use forever. And then on top of that, every year we enter the playoffs and it's the same time that we're starting to think about, okay, well, we're not that far from the draft and free agency. So it naturally is a very busy time, even though I think in a perfect world, you know, we don't have to change our process that much. Um, but yeah. Uh, Josh and Camel, we said 15 minutes and we're about 17. So I really, really thank you. I want to thank you for being a part of this, even though it's early in the morning on the East Coast for you guys. No problem. Yeah, thank thanks you. for having thank us. You. Thank you very much. See ya.